Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. In this video, I will introduce another way to check categorical syllogisms for validity. Now you already know how to check them for validity by the form of the syllogism and by using the Venn diagram. Now you will learn how to check them for validity with the five rules method. That is, you can check the categorical syllogism to see if it breaks any of these five rules. And if it does not break any of these rules, then it is unconditionally valid. If it breaks only rule five, then it is conditionally valid from the Aristotelian standpoint. You can memorize these rules. You can check the description box or you can make a note. Now for the first two rules, you'll need to know about distribution. See my video in this playlist, video number 54, for more information. But in short, the distribution rule says that A propositions distribute the subject, E propositions distribute both the subject and the predicate, I propositions distribute neither term, and O propositions distribute the predicate. Remember this memory aid. It'll help you. Any student earning B's is not on probation. This helps you remember because the first letters in the words suggest the terms distributed by the four kinds of propositions, A, E, I, and O propositions. Let's get right into these five rules. Rule one, the middle term must be distributed at least once. If this rule is broken, then the fallacy of undistributed middle is committed. Look at this syllogism. First, we mark all the terms that are distributed with a small letter D. Notice all three propositions are A propositions, so all the subject terms are distributed. Now we check to see if the middle term is distributed. Remember what the middle term is from the video number 64? The middle term is the term that is repeated in the premises. Mammals is the middle term in this syllogism. And you may notice that it is not distributed in either premise. There is no letter D next to it in either premise. So this syllogism is invalid. It breaks rule one. The syllogism commits the fallacy of undistributed middle. Here's a quick practice problem. Choose the correctly marked terms. Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. This is the correct answer. A propositions distribute the subject, and O propositions distribute the predicate. Any student earning B's is not on probation. Next, look at the syllogism. Is the middle term distributed? Press pause if you need more time. The answer in three, two, one. The middle term is not distributed in either premise. Rule one is broken. So what fallacy is committed? Press pause if you need more time. The answer in three, two, one. The undistributed middle fallacy. Is the syllogism form valid or invalid? Press pause. The answer in three, two, one. Invalid. Because rule one is broken. Next practice problem. Choose the correctly marked syllogism. Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. E propositions distribute both subject and predicate and A propositions distribute the subject. Is the middle term distributed in either premise? Press pause, the answer in three, two, one. Yes, the middle term is distributed. It has a letter D next to it. Rule one is not broken. Is it possible that this syllogism is valid? Press pause, the answer in three, two, one. It is possible that this syllogism is valid. Very good job learning rule one. Next, you will learn rule two. Rule two says that if a term is distributed in the conclusion, then it must be distributed in the premise. If this rule is broken, then the fallacy of illicit major or illicit minor is committed, depending on which term is in violation. Look at these syllogisms. First step is to mark all the terms that are distributed. Next, we look at the conclusion. If a term is distributed in the conclusion, then it must be distributed in the premise. Look at this syllogism's conclusion. This term is distributed, but when we check the premises, the term is not distributed. And since this is the major term, the syllogism commits the fallacy 
of illicit major. In this syllogism's conclusion, this term is distributed, but it is not distributed in the premises. And since this is the minor term, the syllogism commits the fallacy of illicit minor. If the conclusion is an I proposition, rule two will never be broken. Why? Well, because I propositions do not distribute either term. All right, practice problem time. Choose the correctly marked term. Press pause. If you need more time, the answer will appear in three, two, one. This syllogism's distributed terms are correctly marked. Now, is there a term that is distributed in the conclusion, but not in the premise? Press pause the answer in three, two, one. The subject term is distributed in the conclusion, but not in the premises. Since this syllogism breaks rule two, what fallacy is committed? Press pause, the answer in three, two, one. The fallacy of illicit minor. Since the term distributed in the conclusion, but not in the premises, is the minor term. Now, is the syllogism valid? Press pause if you need more time. Three, two, one. Rule two is broken. The syllogism is not valid. Next practice problem. Is there a term distributed in the conclusion, but not in the premises? Press pause. Three, two, one. Both terms are distributed in the conclusion and in the premises. Is rule two broken? Press pause. Three, two, one. Since the terms distributed in the conclusion are also distributed in the premises, rule two is not broken. Next practice problem. Is there a term distributed in the conclusion but not in the premise? Press pause if you need more time in three, two, one. P is distributed in the conclusion but not in the premise. Now, does this syllogism break rule two? Press pause in three, two, one. Rule two is broken. A term is distributed in the conclusion but not in the premises. Now, since rule two is broken, what fallacy is committed? Press pause. Three, two, one. Illicit major. The term distributed in the conclusion, but not in the premises, is the major term. Very good job on those practice problems. Now, I will introduce rule three. Rule three says that two negative premises are not allowed. Now, if a syllogism breaks rule three, the fallacy of exclusive premises is committed. Look at this example. Notice both premises are negative. Since both premises are negative, rule three is broken, and the fallacy of exclusive premises is committed. Now look at this syllogism. Are both premises negative? Press pause. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Only one premise is negative. And since only one premise is negative, is rule three broken? Press pause. The answer in three, two, one. Only one premise is negative, so rule three is not broken. Next practice problem. Are both premises negative? Press pause if you need more time. The answer in three, two, one. E and O propositions are both negative propositions. And since both premises are negative, what fallacy is committed? Press pause. The answer in three, two, one. The fallacy of exclusive premises. Both premises are negative. Very good job on those practice problems. Next, rule four. Rule four says that a negative premise requires a negative conclusion. And a negative conclusion requires a negative premise. If this rule is broken, then the fallacy of drawing an affirmative conclusion from a negative premise is committed. Or the fallacy of Drawing a negative conclusion from an affirmative premise is committed. Now, here's two examples of the fallacies. Notice this syllogism draws an affirmative conclusion from a negative premise. This syllogism draws a negative conclusion from an affirmative premises. Let's work a practice problem. This syllogism breaks rule four. What fallacy is committed? Press pause, the answer in three, two, one. The second premise is negative, but the conclusion is affirmative. Next practice problem. What fallacy is committed here? Press pause. The answer in three, two, one. Both premises are affirmative, but the conclusion is negative. Well, very good job on rule four. Next, rule five. 
Rule 5 says that if both premises are universal, then the conclusion cannot be particular. If Rule 5 is broken, the existential fallacy is committed from the Boolean standpoint. A syllogism that breaks only Rule 5 is valid from the Aristotelian standpoint if the critical term represents things that actually exist. But it is not valid from the Boolean standpoint. Now here are two examples. Notice the premises are universal and the conclusion particular. So Rule 5 is broken. If this syllogism breaks only Rule 5, the syllogism would be valid from the Aristotelian standpoint if leprechauns really existed. Since leprechauns do not exist, the syllogism is not valid from the Aristotelian standpoint. The syllogism commits the existential fallacy from both the Aristotelian and the Boolean standpoints. This syllogism breaks Rule 5. Now, since cats actually exist, the syllogism is valid from the Aristotelian standpoint, but it is invalid from the Boolean standpoint and commits the existential fallacy. The term that must denote actually existing things for the syllogism to be valid is indicated by the superfluous distribution rule, which says the critical term is the term that is distributed more than is necessary to satisfy the first two rules. Here's an example. Notice the first premise, the term mammals, is distributed, which satisfies rule one. And in the conclusion, no terms are distributed, which satisfies rule two. But in the second premise, leprechauns is distributed. And since the first two rules are satisfied, leprechauns is the critical term. Since leprechauns do not exist, the syllogism is invalid. In this example, cats is the critical term. Because cats do exist, the syllogism is valid from the Aristotelian standpoint. Let's work a quick practice problem involving all five rules. Practice problem one, rule one, is the middle term distributed at least in one premise? Press pause if you need to. The answer in three, two, one. Yes, the middle term is actually distributed in both premises. Next, rule two. Is there a term that is distributed in the conclusion, but not in the premise? Press pause, the answer in three, two, one. No. P is distributed in the conclusion and in the premise. Next, rule three. Are there two negative premises? Press pause if you need more time, the answer in three, two, one. No. There is only one negative premise. Next, rule four. Is an affirmative conclusion drawn from a negative premise or a negative conclusion from affirmative premises? Press pause, the answer in three, two, one. No. The conclusion is negative, but one premise is negative. All right, next, rule five. Are there universal premises and a particular conclusion? Press pause if you need more time, the answer in three, two, one. Yes. Both premises are universal and the conclusion is particular. Since the syllogism breaks only rule five, it is valid from the Aristotelian standpoint. If the critical term represents actually existing things, but it is not valid from the Boolean standpoint. Now applying the superfluous distribution rule, what term must denote actually existing things for the syllogism to be valid? Press pause, the answer in three, two, one. M is distributed in the first premise, which satisfies rule one, but M is also distributed in the second premise. Now, if M stands for fish, is the syllogism valid or invalid? Press pause if you need more time, the answer in three, two, one. Since fish do, do exist, the syllogism is valid from the Aristotelian standpoint. Now, if M stands for unicorns, is the syllogism valid or invalid? Press pause if you need more time. The answer in three, two, one. Invalid. Unicorns do not exist. So it is invalid from the Aristotelian standpoint. Now, if M stands for unicorns, what fallacy is committed? Press pause if you need more time. The answer in three, two, one. The existential fallacy. Very good job on those practice problems. You are now one step closer to advancing to the next level. See my other videos on logic 
Comment, like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.